So you're thinking about moving to the Bronx. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the top five neighborhoods in the Bronx and I'm getting after it right now. If this is your first time to this channel and you wanna know everything about living in the Bronx, New York, then subscribe below, tap the bell for notifications so you can be the first to know about the current market in the Bronx. My name is Cornell Smith with EXP Realty. We get calls and emails every day from people just like you looking for help on making the move to the Bronx and we absolutely love it. Whether you're moving in 9 days or 90 days, feel free to give us a call, shoot us a text or send us an email, all the information in the description below so we can help make a smooth move to the Bronx. So as I mentioned before, I'm talking about the top 5 neighborhoods of the Bronx. The Bronx is one of 5 boroughs in New York City. The Bronx has a population of about 1.4 million, making it the 4th most populous borough of New York City. In terms of population, it's Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, the Bronx, and Staten Island. So the Bronx is the northernmost portion of New York City. So let's talk about its location and its proximity to other boroughs. To the south of the Bronx, you have my borough of Queens. To let's say the southwest of the Bronx, you have Manhattan, AKA the city, as people like to refer it to. And then to the north of the Bronx, we have Westchester County, which you could think of as a suburb of New York City. So the Bronx is home to the most winningest team in North American professional sports. You know, the New York Yankees, AKA the Bronx Bombers, winners of 27 World Series MLB championships. It's also home to one of the largest zoos in the United States and probably more recognized zoos in the United States in the Bronx Zoo. And it's also home to the oldest public golf course in the United States, you know, the Van Cortland Golf Course at Van Cortland Park, which has been around since 1895. Fun fact, the Bronx has more park space and green space than any other New York City borough. The Bronx is home to 1,200 plus parks and recreational centers and about a quarter, 25% of the land in the Bronx is park space and green space. The Bronx is often looked at and talked about in a negative light. Sure, the Bronx does have its bad areas as does everywhere else in the world. So I'm talking about the Bronx because in my humble opinion, out of all the New York City boroughs, I feel that the Bronx has a lot of potential for growth. Some people may call it gentrification. Some people may call it good change. I'll let y'all decide what it is. But just think about this. They're trying to call South Bronx so bro. So that just tells you about the things that's happening. In my opinion, the Bronx is not a bad place to live if you know you have to be in the Bronx or if you need access to Westchester, certain parts of Queens, or certain parts of Manhattan, like Midtown Manhattan, or especially Uptown Manhattan. The Bronx is very close. So let me talk about the top five neighborhoods of the Bronx. I'm going to be starting from descending order from 5 to 1. So at number 5, we have East Chester. East Chester is in the northeastern section of the Bronx. East Chester has a population of about 4,738 people. East Chester is seen as one of the best places to live in New York. East Chester offers a suburban, urban mix and fill. There are many restaurants, coffee shops, and parks in East Chester. Many young professionals live in East Chester. East Chester is about 45 minutes away from Midtown Manhattan. It's about 20 minutes away from LaGuardia Airport. And it's about 40 minutes away from John F. Kennedy International Airport. The median home value in East Chester is $660,500. So housing options range from, you know, co-ops, condos, single family homes, and multi-family homes. The cheapest option is being a $79,000 co-op and the most expensive option being a $1.5 million two-family home. The median household income in East Chester is $188,585. About 78% of the residents in East Chester own their home. According to Nice.com, East Chester is the 54th best New York City neighborhood to raise a family in out of 227 New York City neighborhoods. And East Chester is the 68th overall best New York City neighborhood to live in, again out of 227 New York City neighborhoods. And fun fact, funny enough, about 5 miles from East Chester in the Bronx, 
there's a Westchester County community also named East Chester. So someone from East Chester is U.S. Congressman Jamal Bowman. So Jamal Bowman was a former principal at the Cornerstone Academy for Social Action in East Chester. Well, I just want to give a shout out to our teachers and our educators. Salute. This is East Chester. So at number four, we have Co-op City. So Co-op City is a cooperative housing development in the northeastern section of the Bronx. And Co-op City is actually the largest cooperative housing development in the United States. Co-op City has a population of about 50,000 people. Co-op City is seen as one of the best places to live in New York. Co-op City has a dense urban feel. There are a lot of restaurants, coffee shops, and parks in Co-op City. Many young professionals and retirees call Co-op City home. Co-op City is about 50 minutes away from Midtown Manhattan. It's about 30 minutes away from LaGuardia Airport. It's about 50 minutes away from John F. Kennedy International Airport. According to Nice.com, Co-op City is the 58th best overall New York City neighborhood to live in out of 227 New York City neighborhoods. So Co-op City is on the grounds of the former Freedom Land USA Amusement Park, which was built in the shape of the United States. So once again, Co-op City is the largest cooperative housing development in the United States. The median home value in Co-op City is $53,303. The median household income in Co-op City is $58,505. About 50% of residents in Co-op City own their homes. Co-op City is financed through the 1955 Limited Profit Housing Law, aka the Mitchell Lama Program where prospective residents could buy or can purchase apartments and townhouses for far below the market rate, thus the median home value being $53,303. Potential residents must undergo application process and a waitlist period. Co-op cities comprise of 35 high-rise buildings and seven clusters of townhouses. Co-op city is a city within a city, includes eight parking garages, three shopping centers including Bay Plaza Shopping Center, a 25-acre educational park which includes a high school, two middle schools, and three elementary schools. There are 40-plus offices which are rented by doctors, lawyers, and other professionals. There are six nursery schools and daycare centers, five baseball diamonds, and four basketball courts in Co-op City. So people from or that lived in Co-op City include former NBA player Rod Strickland. It's sickening. Guaranteed made him jump like Rod Strickland. And I believe that's Kyrie Irving's godfather. Radio and TV personality Big Tigger. RP Rap City. Yo, I'm missing freestyles in the basement. You know, rapper Curtis Blow. These are the breaks. Break it up, break it up, break it up. You know, rapper Cormega, get out my way, give me mom before I take what's yours, make love war. And then also, you know, rapper, actress, Queen Lativa, you and I T Y, you and I T Y, you and I T Y, and Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor. So this is Co op City. So at number three, we have Filson. So Filson is a neighborhood in the northwestern section of the Bronx. It's a privately owned affluent neighborhood. I guess you could say that within the Riverdale section of the Bronx. It has a population of about 6,888 people. It's seen as one of the best places to live in New York. Filson is about 30 minutes away from Midtown Manhattan. It's about 25 minutes away from LaGuardia Airport. It's about 50 minutes away from John F. Kennedy International Airport. The median home value in Filson is $425,281. 
So home and options range from co-ops, condos, single family homes, and multi-family homes. The cheapest property being like a $160,000 co-op to the most expensive property being a $7 million mansion. Fieldston offers a dense urban feel. There are a lot of bars, restaurants, coffee shops, and parks in Fieldston. Many young professionals live in Fieldston. According to Nice.com, Fieldston is the 30th best New York City neighborhood to raise a family in out of 227 New York City neighborhoods and it's the number 37 best overall New York City neighborhood to live in out of 227 New York City neighborhoods. The median household income is $106,470 and about 49% of Filson residents own their homes. Filson is essentially right next to the Van Cortlandt Park. So Van Cortlandt Park is a 1,146 acre park which features you know, athletic fields, tennis courts, fishing, hiking, horseback riding trails, running track, barbecue areas, etc. Van Cortlandt Park is also home to the Van Cortlandt Golf Course, which is the oldest public golf course recognized in the United States, being around since 1895. This is Filson. So at number two, we have Riverdale. So Riverdale is in the northwestern section of the Bronx. It has a population of about 14,437 people. It's seen as one of the best places to live in New York. Riverdale offers a dense urban and suburban mix feel. There are a lot of bars, restaurants, coffee shops, and parks in Riverdale. Many families and retirees live in Riverdale. Riverdale is about 30 minutes away from Midtown Manhattan. It's about 20 minutes away from LaGuardia Airport and it's about 40 minutes away from John F. Kennedy International Airport. The median home value in Riverdale is $341,000. Home and options range from co-ops, condos, single family homes, and multi-family homes. The cheapest option being a $135,000 co-op to the most expensive option being a 4.5 million one family home. The median household income in Riverdale is $117,506. About 48% of Riverdale residents own their homes. So according to Nice.com, Riverdale is the third best New York City neighborhood to raise a family in out of 227 New York City neighborhoods. And it's also the 25th best overall New York City neighborhood to live in again out of 227 New York City neighborhoods. So things to do in Riverdale. There's the Wave Hill Public Garden and Cultural Center. You know, it has flower gardens, an alpine house, greenhouses, and it's a cultural center, a museum without walls. And there's also Riverdale Park, which is 50 forested acres and known to be a haven for birds. If you want to see more of Riverdale, check out my Riverdale vlog. This is Riverdale. So at number one, we have Spiten Dival. Spiten Dival, you can say is in the south or southwestern section of the Bronx. It has a population of about 9,160 people. Spiten Dival is seen as one of the best places to live in New York. Spiten Dival has a dense urban feel. There are many bars, restaurants, coffee shops, and parks in Spiten Dival. Many retirees live in Spiten Dival. Spiten Dival is about 30 minutes away from Midtown Manhattan. It's about 25 minutes away from LaGuardia Airport. It's about 40 minutes away from John F. Kennedy International Airport. The median home value Spiten Dival is $361,643. Home and options range from co-ops, condos, 
single family homes and multi-family homes. The cheapest option being a $95,000 co-op. The most expensive option being a $3.5 million mansion. The median household income is $112,718. About 64% of residents own their own homes. So according to Nice.com, Spiton Dival is the second best New York City neighborhood to raise a family in out of 227 New York City neighborhoods. And Spiton Dival is the 10th best New York City neighborhood to live in again out of 227 New York City neighborhoods. One point of interest in Spite and Dival is Henry Hudson Park. So Henry Hudson Park features a 16 foot statue of Henry Hudson, you know, an English explorer and navigator. And it also contains a small overlook above Spite and Dival Creek. This is Spite and Dival. <laughs> So yes, there you have it. Those are the top five neighborhoods of the Bronx. So those neighborhoods, again, to reiterate, are East Chester, Co-op City, Fieldston, Riverdale, and Spiton Dival. So two of those neighborhoods are on the northeastern section of the Bronx. Two of those neighborhoods are on the northwestern section of the Bronx. And one neighborhood, as you can say, is in the south or southwestern section. So that kind of gives you an idea of, I guess, where you should go if you're looking to come to the Bronx. So yes, and then again, I said this earlier, just my humble opinion, out of all the New York City boroughs, I feel that the Bronx has the most potential. So do it without will with that information. So yes, the Bronx is not a bad locale, especially if you want to access to the city, some of the area airports, or if you have, you know, any dealings or have to go to like Westchester or Queens. And speaking of Queens, if you want to weigh your options between Bronx and another New York City borough, you could check out my top five, you know, neighborhoods in Queens video to, you know, check out your options. So yes, if this is your first time to this channel and you want to know everything about living in the Bronx, New York, then subscribe below, tap the bell for notifications so you can be the first to know about the current market in the Bronx. My name is Cornell Smith with DXP Realty. We are closing emails every day from people just like you looking for help on making the move to the Bronx and we absolutely love it. Whether you're moving in nine days or 90 days for free, gives a call, shoots a text, or send us an email. All the information in the description below so you help you make a smooth move to the Bronx. So as I mentioned before, I told y'all the top five neighborhoods in the Bronx. Thank you for watching. Have a good one. Hope you enjoyed. Peace.